Oh, we've got loads of mail. Let's get stuck into it. Big box will be last, so stick around for that. I showed these recently in another mailbag. I think it was like two mailbags ago, maybe. And these are just USB hubs, little mini USB hubs. And they've got a little spinning adapter here. It spins, so you can adjust them. Right, so you can change which angle they're at. They actually work, they are actually little hubs. I've used this on my SSA. It's sitting on a spectrum analyzer right now, because there's only got one USB port in the front. And I've got a USB flash drive and a dongle for a wireless mouse plugged into it. And I've still got one spare port, so they work fine. The links down below for these. I'll be going smallest to largest, as always. Did I say that already? I don't know, maybe. These are level shifters. I'm not going to get one out, I'm just going to show you in the packet. Converts high level to low level across the IC. So you've got an input on one side, output the other, or vice versa. I think they're bi-directional. It's called a TXS 0108E. 3.3 volt and 5 volt. Yeah, I'll be links for these. I actually wanted these for a project I was working on recently. The project is now gone because I need it urgently. Anyway, I'll use these in future, I'm sure. I had some level shifters, they weren't the right ones. They were UART, so they're only single directional. Unidirectional UARTs, level shifters. I needed to do I squared C, which is bi directional. I was looking for bi directional stuff, and this is one of the things I found. Ah, right, okay. This is a coin cell charger. So it's meant for the uh, 2032s. Now there's a rechargeable 2032. I saw it recently on someone else's channel. Was it Julian's or I can't remember? Someone had rechargeable batteries. Maybe it's Clive. Bobby Clive's channel. He had some little rechargeable CRT 032s. Well, not CRs, it LR, is it LR? And I thought, actually, that'd be a really good idea because I use quite a few of those little batteries. They're used on the tyre sensors on the motorhome, and I have to replace those quite often. And there's like some scales in the kitchen which use them, and some other bits and pieces that use those batteries. So I thought, right, let's look at getting some rechargeable ones. And this is a four cell charger. Interesting, you've got 40 milliamps and 70 milliamps, but uh, yeah. This one's a few USB. USB-C, in fact. It actually has a little booklet in there too. Is it all in Chinese? It is. I'm pretty sure I can figure it out. How complicated could it be? That's pretty cool. You got some surge of chargers. Okay, what's in here? So these are those little pin removal tools, like for taking apart connectors. You can pull the pins out and you know repin things or change wiring or whatever. So I've been meaning to get some of these for a while, and I finally got them. A set of those. Finally got around to it. I got this little scraper thing, which I thought would be quite good for scraping things which you don't want to scrape with metal. Unfortunately, the bag's burst open, but so it's got these little plastic blades, razor blade shapes. If you wanted to, you could probably put a metal blade in there, I suppose. So it's a little scraper. That wasn't that expensive, I think. There's this thing, which I don't know what that is. It's a ratchet. It's a little ratchet. You put a, um, a bit in there. Hold on, I need a knife for this. This little ratchet, you put a screwdriver bit in it, like, um, like one of these. Put those little bits in there, and then you've got a little ratcheting mechanism, apparently. Apparently. There you go. It's quite a stiff one, though. So, flick it over, and it goes the other way. It's quite a stiff ratchet though. I'm not sure what the rest of this bit's for. Well, is it a spit holder? Could you store bits in there? Is that what that's for? Storing bits? I guess it is. Okay, interesting. I thought I'd get this because it's more slimline than the one I've already got. The one I've got now is always quite chunky. It's like a little ratchet sort of, a um, little socket ratchet. So this is more slimline so you get into tight spaces with it. I thought this would be quite good. We have another little LED strip. How good they are? I don't know. It's, just, it's actually floating around inside that housing. It's double side tape. Goes on the back of it. Here we go. Actually, look at it. Double side tape. And that's just pressed into the housing. Just metal housing around it, just to make it look nice. I don't know how good these are. Don't have voltages, that sort of stuff. Maybe I'll try them out, I don't know. But. And then we've got these USB devices, which I think, well, I think the USB devices. Yeah, they are. The power delivery type. Mini car charger, so it does outputs 4.5 volt, 5 amp, 5 volt, 4.5 amp, okay, that makes sense. 9 volt, 3 amp, 12 volt, 2.5 amps on each port. Basically the same, so dual, yep. And total output is 3 amps. Total output of the 5 volt is 3 amps. Isn't that contradictory? 
surely if you've got 5 volts at 4.5 amps on either port, how can the total only be 3 amps? It's pretty much academic anyway. I mean, the idea of having these things is you've got two ports available, which can you know charge a phone and run a device like a dash cam or something like that, or not charge two phones. And three amps will do that anyway. You know, it's fine. So I bought some heat shrink. I was getting quite low on this thin stuff. It's like one millimeter or so, wherever it is. I've been using it a bit recently, like um, around component legs. I'm doing components across a chunk of circuitry. Rather than putting wires onto it and joining it, I'll just use the entire component and put some heat shrink over the legs. And so I was getting quite low on that. So that arrived just in time because I literally had this much left. <laughs> so I've got a few sizes there. It'll be links. I think it's like five meters of each one or something, or I think it's five meters or three meters. And I also got this chunky one. I thought that might be good for something, enclosing circuit boards in things. Maybe. That's pretty big. Links down below. Now I think this is from PB Tech, which means it's probably got some airbag type protection on the very top, and the item is probably sitting in the bottom of the box unprotected. That's usually how they come. We've got paper this time instead of airbag, that's nice. But as predicted, everything's sitting in the bottom of the box unprotected. I think you only chuck it in the top, it's sort of rattling around so much. Anyway, so we've got a uh, Inloop Pro charger. So this is uh, the AA cell charger. Well, it also does triple A's as well, but it comes with four AA's as well. These are two and a half thousand milliamp hour ones. And I've got some more triple A's and some more AA's. So these are rechargeable batteries. They come pre-charged. You can actually use them straight out of the pack if you really want to. I've been using these recently, and I've realised actually I need more because. I don't actually have enough to have some pre-charged ones ready to go, so when I go flat I'm going to swap them out and charge the ones which have gone flat. I actually only had enough to do the job at hand, so I thought I'd better get some more. I think I've got enough now. Well, maybe. Alright, so I've got this big box here now. This has had a bit of a trip. It's like a bit torn here. You know, it doesn't look great there either. It's like been dragged across stuff. It's been dropped on this corner. It's been banged around a bit. Anyway, let's hope that they actually packaged it properly. It feels like it's got some padding, so hopefully it's all right. Let's find out. The tip of opening boxes up, hold the blade like this, all right, so you can't penetrate right into the box and scratch what it was inside it. Decent packaging. Yep, yeah, well done. That's looking good. It's done an effort. It's not 100 millimetres of padding all around that I ask for, but, you know, it's alright. It's been protected. I think it's been adequate. Let's see what the underneath is like. Yeah, yeah, that's all good. There's protection there too. Death from approved. So we've got bubble wrap on it as well. A couple of hours of bubble wrap, not too bad. Would have liked to see more, but I think it was adequate. Got an existing ding on there, and the case is rather wobbly. I'm guessing it's got a missing foot. Yes, it does. Foot missing. What was inside that packaging? I should probably check. Matt, nah, foot's not in the packaging, but it's only a foot. It doesn't matter. I can just replace it. It's not a big deal. It's a shame. Uh, this big dent on the top is interesting. That's a pretty big hit. It's there. Dent this chassis. It's it's pretty solid chassis. Hmm, <laughs> that's quite interesting. And actually, looks like this is designed to actually interface into the feet of these. So maybe these are actually meant to be stackable with other equipment of the same manufacturer. By any post, I'm not sure if this one looks, I don't know, is that one slightly off angle compared to the others? Don't know what you reckon. I mean, it's very slightly bent to the right, but I'm, I'm just being fussy, I think. As you can see, it's a decade capacitor. We should plug this in and see what comes out of it. Well, I've got a meter ready, I'm just gonna use the fluke here. Gives an indication if it's working okay or not. It's still set at zero, we're getting zero nanofarads, that's looking good. One microfarad, yep. Yeah. Two, three, four, five. These switches feel really nice actually, they're really clunky. Nice solid clunky switch, we've got really good detents on them. Eight, yes, perfect. Nine, ten, yes, yeah, good. No, eleven, oh no, eleven. <laughs> that's good. And a nanofarad, yep, yeah, that's good. Two hundred. Excellent, this looks like, like it's actually pretty good. 
I'm not sure what the actual specs were for this thing. I don't remember. I don't think I actually saw much. Actually, it's a point nine. Yeah, and it doesn't go to ten. This one. This one goes to nine. The ten NFOs. Look at that. This is looking really good. I might do a video on this. I might do a tear down. It also only goes to nine. This is good. Even the switches are behaving. Look at that, beautiful. Now, obviously this is bigger ferret. Nothing I can do on here. You won't, you won't register it. Obviously it's just the rounding thing going on there. Yeah, so it's just... We're not going to see that. We need a different meter for this. So you can see we've got the East tester running. I've got 100 hertz running on it. I've got the probes clipped onto the front panel terminals. I've got it set to zero. And we're seeing a bit of noise coming up. You know, 100 hertz, maybe I could do a different frequency, maybe it would be better. Yeah, 200 hertz is quieter. Let's do that one. Obviously, line noise is getting in there. So let's actually null this, shall we? Null that, and let's do 100 picofarads at a time. Well, it's certainly looking fine, isn't it? Now that slight five picofarad error that could be. Anything it could be this meter being slightly off, it could be these capacitors of age a little bit and they're very slightly out, but I think that's absolutely fine. Yeah, okay, let's do the actual dial one. This is a variable capacitor, it's 10 picofarad times up to 10, right? So it's up to 100. So let's go about 10, so one there, yeah, roughly. Yeah, two, it's variable, so I'll go anywhere in that range. And um, let's go up, let's go straight to 10 and see what we get in there on the marking. Try and get it lined up again. I'm really close to it. Yeah, about there. Yep, that's looking fine. So the variable's working. I can actually overshoot slightly and go 106. So nice. That's all working well. Happy with that purchase. And there's a 10 microfarad I've seen by this. But then one microfarad. Yeah, it's fine. That's not an old either. That's just straight through. Yeah, nice.